the third line. Bukhya buk na utri. Bukhya here is referring to the people who are hungry. Bukhya. Bukhya is the people who are hungry. Their hunger, that's the second book, is not lifted. Bukhya buk na utri. Utri means to be lifted. Now this is a, an interesting line here. Je banna puriya par. What do those words mean? So, bukhya, the hungry. Buk, hunger. Or we can talk about desire. Notice here that the buk is what we call mukta. What do I mean by that? The word book doesn't have an onkar underneath it. If it had an onkar underneath it, it would mean a single hunger. When you take the onkar away, it becomes plural, many. In Gurbani grammar, we have words that describe this. Singular is called ikvachan. One word, single word, ikvachan. A word like this, which is plural, is called bovachan. Bovachan. That means a plural word. So here the word puk is bovachan. Pukhya puk. So this means hungers. What is the hunger of the mind? What's another word for the mind being hungry? Desire. Desire. So here, what we're talking about is plural desires. By remaining hungry, so there are two ways to refer to this. By remaining hungry. Now some people think that by abstaining from the world, running away from the world, no contact with maya, minimal amount of food, Buddha practiced this technique. Buddha practiced this technique with a group of meditators for many years and they say to the point at which his, his skin was almost just flesh, and very little flesh, and his skin was showing all of the bones coming through. That he had literally been reduced down to a skeleton. I think it's something like six years he was in this meditative state. One day, it dawned upon him that this was not the technique. He saw a passerby who had a bag of rice, and he simply went and started eating that rice. And he realized that no longer was hunger the path of his meditation. All the other meditators around him felt completely rejected. They felt like this person had great potential, but now that this person had left their path, that he had completely rejected meditation, he was no longer on the path, but actually Buddha was saying that I now realize that I've done this for long enough, this is not the path anymore. Being hungry is not necessary for enlightenment. That's one way to look at this line. But the second way gives a little bit more clarity what it's talking about. Je banna puriya par. Banna means to tie something up. Ban ke rakhna. Banna. To tie something up. Puriya means the world. Par means all the collection, the weight of the world. The possessions of the world. So here, what it's actually talking about is another technique. The technique here is that of indulgence. So there is a particular technique <coughs> that is the opposite of being 
reclusive from the world, there's another technique that says, if I'm going to find God, I'm going to enjoy my time as I do it. I'm going to indulge in anything that my mind wants, so my mind no longer is left with any desires. So that's another technique. Let me indulge in anything that my mind wants, in all the pleasures that the mind can think of, if I gather all of that, all wealth, all materialism, I experience all the experiences that my mind wants. Now this is something that we know today. If you take the meditation side of it, in the Western world, we see this as the way to live. Any spare moment that we get in our life, we go and fulfill a desire of the mind. And in fact, this kind of way of thinking is almost encouraged. We're told that the way to live is to seize the day. The Latin word is carpe diem, seize the day. Live today as though it's your last day. If today was your last day, what are all the crazy things you're allowed to do? Go and do them. Throw yourself off a bridge scuba dive with sharks, parachute jump, all the crazy things that your mind can think of, any extreme that hasn't been reached, let's climb a mountain, all of those things are what we're encouraged to do these days. But Guru Nanak says that this doesn't stop that, that desire. Once you go down that path, the more you fulfill your mind's desires, your mind doesn't become satisfied. That desire, if you keep indulging in that desire, your book never gets satisfied. It gets worse. Absolutely. So here this line means the desires of mind, the mind's desires of the hungry people, the Pukya people, the ones who are constantly trying to achieve more, <coughs> their desires are not removed even if we collected all of the world's possessions. Jebanna Puriya Par, the whole of the world's possessions, we obtained them. If we fulfill every desire, the desire of the mind is not obtained. And in the same way we can say that even if we refrain from the world and we run away from the world, even then the mind continues to desire. If you were to convince yourself that actually the world is the problem, the reason why you're not developing spiritually, is that you're too distracted by the world. That in fact your responsibilities in life, your work, your family, your commitments, they're the things that are holding you up. You might convince yourself that actually I need to step away from the world. That maya is my problem. And you might say I need to go and find some meditative retreat and go live somewhere else in, in some ashram for a long period of time. Until I get over it. <coughs> while you're away you'll find that your mind is still with your family because that's who you are that's where you belong you'll constantly know and feel that you're actually away from your normal normal life so as you step your body away your mind will not step away from that and how long can you live that life. At some point responsibilities kick in. At some point you'll have to earn some money wherever you live to feed yourself, to clothe yourself. Then you're going to want to have some companionship because you don't want to live by yourself. So that becomes your new circle. That becomes your new community, your new friends, your new set of responsibilities. Because this is the natural way of humans.
We are tribal beings. We live in groups. We have to eat. We have to rest. We have to cleanse ourselves. We have to clothe ourselves. So eventually you'll find yourself back in the same situation. So Guru Nanak Dev Ji says that being a recluse and running away from the world isn't a technique. 